In one of the previous videos, we described how ozone can be started very easily with the help of Docker Compose. And there was a question on the YouTube channel that how can we do the same with Kubernetes using ozone containers? And this is what we will be answered in this video. So first of all, this is a very famous quote. Actually, this is the very first sentence of uh, Anna Karenina from Lev Tolstoy. And so all unhappy families are very different. And we have exactly the same problem with Docker Compose and Kubernetes. So it's very easy to provide a good user experience with Docker Compose because all of Docker Compose clusters or environments are very similar. But with Kubernetes, maybe because Kubernetes is for production, you can run Ozone in production with the help of Kubernetes. So maybe because this, but there are some decision points or questions which should be answered before you deploy Kubernetes or Ozone to, to Kubernetes. And these are the points which should be uh, checked first. So, Let's say I have a Kubernetes cluster and I have one node and in this inside the node I have the leader nodes, the storage container manager, the ozone manager and I have data nodes. Data node and because I need a data replication just to avoid any data loss, I need multiple data nodes, right? But this is not how it should look like in a production cluster. So in a production cluster, usually we have one data node per real physical node, right? Because the big limitation is the IO. So I think the real, real deployment is something like this. So let's put the data node two to there and the data node three to there. But it's possible only if you have multiple nodes. So this is the first question. Do you have multiple nodes? If you have multiple nodes, it seems to be better to schedule the data nodes to different physical nodes. The next one is that we need some persistent store for data node and actually for the leader nodes as well. And this persistent node uh, data directory can be multiple types. So it can be an ephemer ephemeral directory somewhere inside a container. It's not very useful unless you do some kind of testing. For testing, it's useful, but it's easy to start. For a real cluster, what you need is something which is, a, which is part of the node itself. So let's say a, a directory is shared with the data node two, and this directory is part of the, the physical node. And this is the second question, which should be answered. And there is a third question about the, about the image. So actually, there are multiple options. So this is, the, this is the node question. If you have multiple node or one node, this is about the scheduling. There is this persistent, if you have persistent storage defined on the Kubernetes, or you can just use some ephemeral data directory for testing. And you need an ozone image. Usually we have one for the release, but if you have a custom environment or a production environment, it, it can be better to build your own image. And for development, you can even mount the latest build with some tricks. So these are a lot of options. So this is 12 options, right? You can choose in different ways. So it's very important to understand that how can you identify the different kind of examples that which should be uh, used. So let's go to an ozone directory. First of all, we need a Kubernetes cluster. I strongly recommend to use the K3S. It's a, it's a very good uh, tool. The only thing what you need is K3S. This is a rancher tool. You can just download and follow the installation manual. I'm just uh, starting this Kubernetes cluster here. Oh, actually with some kind of permission, right? Okay. So, here I'm in a fresh build. So this is the exactly the same directory, which is the content of the release. So if you download the release, you will see this one. In the previous video, we discussed this compost folder. So today we will check this Kubernetes folder and we have this examples and definitions. So 
we discussed that we have a lot of options so what can we do so what we can do here or what we do here actually is we provide multiple examples and we provide rules to modify the examples according to your own need so let's start in the in the ozone and let's try to understand what kind of uh, example is this one so let's check the data node stateful set so here what we can see is a volume claim template the exact content it's not very important this is mounted somehow to the container but it means that i need a persistent storage so if you see this one you need a, a local storage so this is uh, this is this case the persistent storage you have a persistent storage when you see this one and it works only if you have a storage class if you have no storage class it won't work you will see pending containers nothing else this is a very typical mistake with the ozone that the ozone directory is supposed to be a more production ready if i go to the getting started and i check exactly the same stateful set the data node stateful set at the end i see a similar volume but here this is just an empty directory this is the ephemeral storage there could be here a memdisk option, which means that it will be even more faster and even more fake. But this is an ephemeral storage. If the pod is rescheduled, all of the data will be lost. But you can try out any of the features. So that's what you should check first, that what kind of persistent would you like to use and what do you have. So this is the, the other one. So let's check this one and this one. Do you have one node or multiple nodes? Actually, I have just one node. You can see my node is, for some reason, it's OM2. So I have one node. Let's start again in the ozone directory, example slash ozone in, inside the Kubernetes. And let's say what's in the stateful set. So in the stateful set, we have an pod affinity. This is the scheduling rule, as this is something like this for each host, I would like to schedule only one data node i wouldn't like to have two data nodes on the same host so if you have one node like me you should remove it and uh, actually in the ozone dev it's already removed oh, oh let's say in the getting started this is what we checked earlier yes uh, data node stateful set there is no scheduling rules, affinity, no affinity, just plain old Kubernetes. Yeah, that's what we have. And the third question is, let's go back to the question. This is the, if you see the scheduling, you are here. And if you don't see any anti-affinity rule, then you are here. The other one is that if you download the release, then it will work because we have an Apache Ozone image uploaded. I do it from the build, so I need a Docker image. I need to create one image. And let's go back to here. You can see that the Docker image, this is not uploaded. So this is some, some kind of snapshot. So I'm just go to the distribution directory. But here there is a Docker file. So actually it's very easy to create a book. this Docker build. So this, this is the tag name and I would like to build it from the current directory okay so it's created so i can go back to the kubernetes examples getting started so i know the image right the image is the snapshot i just created i know that in the data node stateful set i have ephemeral data which will be lost after the restart but i can try out also and it's fine and there is no scheduling so i will have three data nodes on the same node so it looks good for me Cube control get pod, uh, cube control apply, current directory, and I'm just applying. And cube control get pod. Oh, it's running. Let's check. Cube control logs storage container manager zero. Yeah, seems to be working. So cube control exec storage container manager bash. Mm. 
I guess I need some interactive cube control exec interactive mode bash yes and I can create for example a volume oh it works bucket or I can just put a file key put wall one bucket one key one and let's put the readme bucket one Oh, it can identify that the bucket. Oh, okay. So it 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 works. Okay. So I'm going to control delete. I'm just deleting this deployment, and I'm checking the ozone itself. So this is the full example, and I can do a Q control apply. Let's check what's going. It's pending. So if you have no storage class, this is what we will, what uh, you will see all the time. Actually, I have storage class, so it can change to running, right? If I check the storage class, you can see that I have a local path. Use K3S because you will have storage class out of the box. Cube control. I can check the persistent volume claims, which are the requests to use some kind of persistent um, storages. And you can check the persistent volumes, which are created by Kubernetes. You can see that they are created. And you can check the details of the persistent volumes. So this is the persistent volume ID. And here you can see that, oh, this is a local directory, which is just shared. So I can go to there, hopefully, and check what's there. Oh, can I go to there? Okay. And you can see that this is the raft, raft log, so it's, it's, it's working. Okay, what else do we have here? The problem is that I have just one data node zip, right? The second data node is just pending. What is the problem with the second data node? Q control describe data node 1 data describe pod yes and you can see that we have a lot of information about the pod itself but here you can see that I have only one node but in this specific setup I have multiple I have multiple uh, I have a configuration to use multiple nodes so I need multiple nodes to to uh, to deploy this specific setup. So we have a lot of examples here. If you are a power user, you can also check the the this flexible tool. This is a third-party tool, an external open source application, and these are just transformation to support different kind of environments. We are just regenerating all of the Kubernetes resource files based on some kind of rules. So, for example, I can say that flexible generate, and I think the image should be something as, and the files are here, and let's check the data node stateful set YAML file, what's inside, and here I have the image you can see that it's modified i can also try to say that okay ozone one node i have only one node but i would like to use this one again what's here you can see that it, again the image is xx and the anti-affinity rule the scheduling rule is removed so this is how does it work under the hood it's not required to have this tool because all of the examples are generated but it's very good to understand what's going on and what kind of uh, configuration do you have so as a summary one thing is the persistent storage in production you should use some external disk what i have currently thanks to the k3s the scheduling is another important. Usually it's better to schedule data nodes to different nodes, but sometimes you have just one node. And for the image you can use, if you downloaded the release, you can just use the Apache Ozone. In any other case, it's better to use your own image.
So that's the quick summary. And it's very important for the Ozone directory inside the Kubernetes slash examples. It's configured to be a more production-like setup. So it requires persistent storage. It requires three data nodes. If you would like to just play with Ozone, use getting started, or you can try Ozone Dev, which contains additional tools like Prometheus and uh, distributed tracing. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any question, just add it to the YouTube comment section.